dear student welcome to today class so today i am going to explain about the gibb bind cartogen so this is the third type of a cartogen so first we'll come to know what are the different components that are going to be used to joint this design of gibb bind cartogen okay so uh, first of all i am going to uh, make a design for the square rods okay so when there is an square rod and we are going to use the gib and quarter joint to assemble these two square rods okay so there will be one end like a forked end and another end it will be like square rod so these two plates or these two square rod to be assembled okay so with the help of and quarter so there will be quarter will be inserted as as you know that there will be socket and spigot in the first type of a quarter jet similar type this will be having okay but instead of that we are using the square rod and also in additional we are going to use the gib okay now in, in this video we'll understand uh, with a diagram so that how they are going to be assembled okay so i will try to draw an 3d diagram for this okay let us assume the sum of the assembly drawing here okay so here there will be like one end like this will be like an forked end one end will be like forked end or i end and another end it will be an a square rod okay so square rod same size okay so now these two rod to be assembled so there will be slot is made between the fork end like this here there is another slot which will be made so that this quarter and gib will be inserted and the same slot will be made in the gib also okay so the hole will be provided here now the this will be inserted in the fork end the square rod it will be inserted in the fork end and after that a gib so gib is like an a c section so this is an gib and as you know that quarter it will be like a rectangular taper section having a thickness width and length okay so this also having the thickness length and this width this will be the thickness so all this uh, parameter will explain later first let me uh, complete this assembly okay so once the uh, the square rod it will be inserted in the fork end then a gib it will be inserted okay so the gib will be inserted like half of that portion it will be completely move into and this surface this corner it is going to be touch with the one of the slot edge okay so and at the end again the thickness of the gib it will be outside the fork end okay so this will be inserted and it will be move to the one end the gib, gib it will be move to the one end after that the quarter taper section quarter that will be inserted here like this okay this is an quarter in the half a portion the quarter will be inserted 
okay so this is again a temporary joint so whenever if you want to disassemble just you can uh, remove the quarter and give so that the all the two parts it will get disassembled easily okay so now the axial load will be applied from the both the end let us say p is the axial load and the stresses again here we are using slots so there is a chance of crushing due to the moment of the quarter and gib in the slot so that rectangular slot it becomes a different shape or oval shape somewhere so that stresses will be developed as crushing stress in the that area where the slot is made that will be called as weakest section okay and also in the quarter and also give there is a chance of shear of also so the shear stress can be developed in this material okay so when the two forces are applied equally opposite in direction so the stress will be developed in the material will be having shear stress and also there is a uh, failure of the rod in tension also so that here you can find the tensile stress in the rod so these are the stresses can be developed in the material okay now here the x will be taken as the width or the sides of the rods each sides of the rod will be taken as x so the same x will be is equal to the b1 okay so width of the strap that is also be equal to the x okay so that is the first condition condition it is there and also as you know that there will be b as the average width of the quarter and l will be the thickness of the quarter and t will be the thick sorry l will be the length of the quarter and t will be the thickness of the quarter okay and other parameters like the thickness of the quarter generally t it will be calculating using the x divided by 4 so whatever the sides distance divided by 4 you are getting the thickness of the quarter okay and now the thickness of the gib okay so this will be the thickness of the gib that is you can say t1 or t2 uh, thickness of the gib that is is equal to the thickness of the quarter okay like that you have to understand the first assembly part of this so that we can go for the design procedure okay so in the next class i am going to explain what are the design procedure for the gibbine quarter joint then after that we'll have one numerical also thank you